It's all over this morning. Coming up, we'll take a closer look at yesterday's historic election in what was a day to remember for Kentucky's Republicans. Lexington police say a man's in custody after leaving police on a chase last night. We've got the latest details ahead. And after a judge denied his plea deal, the case against a Boyle County man accused of mistreating dogs will now head to trial. This is WKYT This Morning. And good morning to you. I'm Barbara Bailey in for Bill Bryant, who had a late night last night. <laughs> yes, we understand that he needs to get at least a little bit of shut eye. I'm Rebecca Smith. Thanks for joining us, and we're glad to have you here. And well, thank you. Glad to be here. And, and boy, what an election. Don't ever say that elections in Kentucky are dull I mean, because they're not. It seemed to be an unpredictable situation, and we are uh, in a new era right now. But let's see what's uh, kicking with the weather to get us into that era. Yeah, you know, it's a good day in store. Absolutely. Starting off, uh, a typical story. Are atypical, I should say, and we're not really seeing outside those temperatures that we usually see this time of year. 50s out, it's not all that bad. And we'll take it into the afternoon. Another day of 70s, we'll be at 75 degrees. And yesterday, we we're actually in the mid 70s. Some of us actually reached the upper 70s. So, are we going to continue to see this trend, or when do we see that cold air move on in? It's November after all. Well, I'll talk, you, I'll talk to that and talk about that forecast in just a few minutes. All right, after months of campaigning, the race for governor now complete. Kentucky took to the polls yesterday, and results showed the state clearly demanded change. Businessman Matt Bevan will now become Kentucky's second Republican governor in the last 40 years. His running mate, Janine Hampton, will be the first African American to hold statewide office in Kentucky. Bevan defeated Democrat Jack Conway, the state's attorney general, by nearly nine percentage points. Republicans also won state auditor, agriculture commissioner, and treasurer. WKYT's Miranda Combs was in Louisville last night and has more on the reaction from the Bevan campaign headquarters. Hundreds of supporters gathered to watch Matt Bevan give his victory speech tonight, and many stayed well into the night to celebrate. How does it feel to be governor elect? It feels outstanding. It's a good day for that was Governor-elect Matt Bevin's first words as he walked out to greet hundreds of his supporters as the second Republican governor in four decades. What an extraordinary night this is. I'll tell you what is awesome, that this is a race that is a collective effort. You all are the wind behind us. You all were the momentum that brought this forward. You all represent those who from east to west, from north to south, are why we indeed will be the next governor and lieutenant governor of this Commonwealth of Kentucky. Bevin said many times throughout his campaign that Kentucky needs a fresh start. Tonight, he promised the same and took a moment to remember what he's grateful for. For the one and a half million Americans who have given their lives in uniform of our nation's military, for the men and women who have given their lives in the uniform of our police officers and our firefighters and our other first responders, they have afforded us the very ability to be here tonight, freely assembled, freely speaking, and having the very privilege of the ballot box. And so our hat is off to those of you who have given everything and to your families who are watching tonight. Bevan introduced all nine of his children, but made the comment he wouldn't go through their full names because it would take too long. He also said he was excited for the Republican Party, which got big applause. But what got even bigger applause was when he said this was a great night for conservatives. In Louisville, Miranda Combs, WKYT. All right. Thank you so much, Miranda. As we mentioned, Republicans also scored victories in three other statewide races in last night's election, among them state auditor. Republican Mike Harmon, a state lawmaker and insurance agent, ousted incumbent Democrat Adam Edelin. Harmon won the, uh, won the race despite spending far less money than Edelin. About three weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, I felt like God was leading me to pick up five stones, five stones to be symbolic of the David and Goliath. But you know what? I read the book. David won. Well, in the state treasurer's race, Republican Allison Ball easily defeated Democrat Rick Nelson. Ball says her background will help her in office. Yeah, as a bankruptcy attorney, I think all the time about fixing financial problems, getting people on sound financial footing, and I am eager to use those skills in the treasurer's office to be that watchdog on our spending. 
In the race for Agriculture Commissioner, Republican Ryan Quarles defeated Democrat Jean Marie Lawson Span. Quarles, currently a state representative from Georgetown, campaigned on his farming experience. You know, the future of agriculture is bright, and I'm glad to plow new ground as we continue the success of the Kentucky Proud Marketing Program, continue agriculture education. Well, it was a rough night for Kentucky's Democratic Party, but it did get two victories last night. Andy Bashir, the son of the governor, was narrowly elected as attorney general over Republican lawmaker Whitney Westerfield. And in the race for Secretary of State, Democrat Allison Lundergan Grimes, she wins another term over Republican Steve Nipper. But this morning, many Kentucky Democrats may be asking what went wrong after losing the governor's office in three other races. Sean Moody was in attendance at the Conway headquarters last night. He has more from Frankfurt. The loss is still just a few hours old. Democrats expected to see Jack Conway move into the governor's mansion, but instead, that race came to a stunning end here in Frankfurt. The Democrats went into the race with Conway leading Bevan by five points in the most recent WKYT Herald Leader Bluegrass poll. But Bevan jumped out to an early lead when results started coming in, and that lead just kept on growing. The crowd never seemed confident once the results started coming in. When the Associated Press called the race for Bevan, the crowd got really quiet. Conway gave his concession speech shortly before 9 p.m. To the people of Kentucky, I want to say to you, I respect your decision. I hope we can always work together in common purpose. I love our state. I love its diversity. I love everything about it. I love Kentucky. And I want to thank and I want to thank the people of Kentucky for the tremendous honor of allowing me to serve as the 49th Attorney General in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. There were a couple of bright spots for the Democrats. Allison Lundergan Grimes won re-election to Secretary of State and Andy Bashir won the Attorney General race. We were able to catch up with Attorney General-elect Andy Bashir. We asked him about what his priorities would be moving forward. He said he'd focus on child abuse and scams targeting elderly people. In Frankfurt, Sean Moody, WKYT. Sean, thank you. As for independent candidate Drew Curtis, he finished a distant third in the race for governor. He watched the results with supporters last night at Chase Brewing in Lexington. Despite the loss, Bevan said there were still plenty of positives. Actually, that would be uh, uh, Drew Curtis said there were actually a lot of positives to take away from his campaign. I'm a novice. I've never done this before, and I'm not a politician, yet I was able to get into this race, more or less control the co topics of conversation about this, and actually make a dent in the way that everything ran. Now, Curtis also says because of social media, he thinks there will be more candidates like him in the future. On WKYT.com, we have extensive coverage of all the statewide elections. We also have interactive maps showing how Kentuckians voted. Well, Rowland County Clerk Kim Davis is now asking a federal appeals court to overturn a judge's ruling that ordered her to issue marriage licenses to same sex couples. In a new filing, Davis's attorney say a Judge David Bunning's order was a, quote, rush to judgment, which trampled her religious liberty. Davis spent five days in jail for defying the order. Since then, the clerk's office has been issuing marriage licenses without Davis's name on them. And there's more news this morning. Police are investigating after a Lexington gas station was robbed overnight. It happened just after midnight at the Thornton's gas station on Versailles Road. The store clerk says two men walked in, implied they had a weapon, and demanded money. Once they had the money, the clerk said the two men fled away. Upon arriving to the scene, officers say they located two men nearby who matched the description. Police say they, were, they brought the two men in for questioning, but neither has been charged at this time. We have learned new details this morning after Lexington police were involved in a short chase on Angliana Avenue. Police say they responded to a call about a suspicious man on South Broadway just after 9 last night. They began searching and saw the man fitting the description close by. They chased him to the Angliana apartment complex. Police say that the man threw something into the bush while being chased. Officers found a gun inside. At last check, police say they took the man into custody. We're questioning him about recent robberies in the area. New this morning, the case against a Boyle County man accused of mistreating dogs will move to trial. 
Chris Pope and his legal team tried to reach a plea deal to settle the case, but it was rejected by the judge, according to the advocate messenger. Now, Pope will go to trial November 20th. Pope faces multiple counts of animal mistreatment, neglect, and failing to license and vaccinate his dogs. Back in July, authorities raided a home on Old Shakertown Road and confiscated 11 of his dogs. Well, this morning, police are investigating what led to a deadly shooting in Rowan County. Happened late yesterday afternoon along Cold Springs Hollow off Old House Creek Road near Moorhead. The Rowan County Sheriff's Office says 51 year old Philip Gent got into an argument with his brother. At some point, investigators say Gent's brother shot him. Police say Gent later died at the hospital. Uh, you know, death is always tragic, uh, especially when there are family members involved. Uh, it's, it's just a, it's a tragic situation. So far, the sheriff's office says no charges have been filed. WKYT this morning is just getting started. New research shows taking medications for anxiety or depression while pregnant is safe for the baby. That's more in today's Moms Everyday Minute just ahead. It's all about the temperatures today. Again, another warm one in store. I'll show you how high we get today coming up.